So we've sketched out our basic shape in the previous lesson. Now we need to start looking at how we're going to cut this out using the computer-aided manufacturer side of Fusion. Now computer-aided manufacturer is a fancy way of saying we're going to select the tool paths and tools and start to create the program to cut this out that we can then put through the post processor to turn it into G-code and then send that G-code file to our CNC router ready to cut. So to go into the CAM side of Fusion, we go up to the box here where it says Model, and we're going to change our workspace to Manufacture. Now this is the CAM side of Fusion 360. So we're going to click on Manufacture. Now we have a new toolbar along the top. We have our 2D and 3D adaptive clearing milling cycles. We can drill, do multi-axis stuff, lathe work, most of this is not needed for CNC routers. We're mainly looking at 2D with CNC routers. So we op open up our 2D list and see what options we have. The one we need to use here is 2D contour. We don't really wish to use a 2D pocket or adaptive clearing because what this would do is it would slowly remove all the material from the middle. All we wish to do is go around the outside profile with a milling cutter to cut out the shape. So we go into 2D Contour. 2D Contour is the option that we wish to select for this kind of milling. It says here it creates toolpaths based on 2D contours and the contour can be open or closed and be on different Z levels. So this is perfect for what we need. We just need to profile out this shape. So I'm going to click on 2D Contour. So now we need to select which feature we wish to remove the material from. So I'm going to select on this bottom contour of our pocket here and it's given us the direction of our cutter. So it looks like we're climb milling here, but we can select more options for this on our contour box, which I'll go through now. So starting at geometry, we've selected the geometry here. We've, we've told the machine which part we wish to remove material from. Now, if we wish to keep the middle bar, we can select the tabs. And what tabs do is it gives us the option to have snap off areas. So we can machine the area out and then snap off the tabs and clean it up with a file once we've finished machining. But since we wish to remove this part of the material and keep the outside parts at this time, tabs are not required. We also have options where we can leave on extra stock, so we can calculate for a finishing cycle if required, which we will cover in later lessons. So as we go across these boxes here, we've got different things we need to set up in our 2D contour box. So that's the geometry, that's all fine at this point, now we need to look at our hypes. Now our hypes control the retract value. So here we have the top plane of our material, which would be zero position, where the datum would be, this blue plane here. This is our top surface of the material. The green area here is our clearance height reference. This is how far the tool will retract in between cutting, so it's clear of the part. And finally, we have our top one here, the orange one. Now this is our clearance height reference, where the cutter will return to when it's fast wrapping back to its home position, etc, etc. So we've got two different clearance levels here that we need to set. So if we're using clamps, we need to set these areas a little bit higher so they go above the top surface of the clamps so the cutter misses them as it's wrapping around our part. But in this case, I'm going to leave everything as standard. There's no need to adjust anything for me at the moment and we're going to click on to the next one which is the number of passes we're going to do. So we can step down and do this in multiple passes if we're going through a lot of material, if it's a large cut. But we're using 10 millimeters of material here so maybe two or three passes would be ideal. This also tells us here that we are left climb milling, the cutter is moving this way around the part. Now the difference between climb milling and conventional milling, um, if we're using a rear current ball lead screw which is a fancy way of saying a really expensive slideway system. Um, Climbing is fine because backlash is taken care of within the lead screw. But if your machine is more cheaper and using standard uh, threads for this kind of thing, then conventional milling would probably be better. It's about machine rigidity. If the machine is nice and rigid, we can use climb milling. It does give a better surface finish and higher accuracy, but Sometimes the machine might not be rigid enough to handle climb milling because it does push against the backlash all the time. So if we're conventional milling, it's going the same way as the backlash. So it eliminates 
the backlash from the process. So as we move down this box, we can see the minimum cutter radius. We don't really need a cutter radius on this because we are cutting right through. So we can leave that as zero. Same as we've got a finishing smooth in deviation. We can leave that at zero at the moment as well. I'll cover more about that in later lessons. Multiple finishing passes. This is for spring cuts. So sometimes running a cutter over the same area without removing any more material will increase the surface finish and make it a lot smoother. So we might need this if we're getting a bad surface finish. The same as repeat finishing pass. It's the same sort of thing. The feed rate here we can mark down is at the moment I'm using one meter per minute, but we can change this depending on the material and tools that we are using. So everything else seems to be right here. I just want to have a look at multiple depths because we want to do this in three passes and not one. So I'm going to click on multiple depths here and this gives us more options as to how we wish our paths to take when we are machining this part out. So the maximum roughing step down is one millimeter. We've got a 10 millimeter thick part here. So I'm okay to set that to four millimeters. That's a fine depth of cut for what we're doing. Finishing step down is the final cut as it goes down to the bottom surface. Now as we're cutting right through, this is not important for us. That's if we want to get a nice surface finish on the bottom of the material, but we're removing that part. Our walls are flat, so we don't have to worry about a tapered angle for this. Our final finish step down here, again, is a little bit small, 0.2 millimeters. We can set this quite comfortably at four millimeters, the same as our maximum rough and depth. So it's always gonna step, step down the same amount each time the tool indexes down on the Z axis. Well, it takes a bigger cut. Okay, we don't need to worry about linking at this stage. Again, it's something we will cover later, but we do need to start looking at what tool we're gonna to use. So I'm gonna click on the first checkbox along the top here. So now we're gonna take a look at selecting the tool we're gonna to need to use this. So under tool, we just click select. And this opens up our tool library, which is built into Fusion 360. If the tool is listed here is not in your toolbox, that's fine. You can define your own tools and the machine will calculate the cutting paths regarding the diameter, etc., for us. But at this point, I'm gonna look at a tool that's already in the system just for the purpose of this lesson. So a nice flat bottom milling cutter would be perfect for this. So I'm gonna use, so I'm not gonna use a ball nose, I'm gonna use a flat bottom milling cutter. So I'm just gonna click on this to select and okay. As we go down this list here, we can select the different vendors and it tells us what ones are in stock in the machine controls. As I said, we can also make our own and store these in this toolbox as well. So we can just pull in tools that we have in our own garage or workshop. So something around a quarter of an inch tool, around six millimeters would be fine for what I'm using. So I'm gonna go with a flat, two fluted, uncoated tool. So we just double click on that and it brings our tool into our software. Now working our way through the box here, we have, it asks us what coolant our machine uses, whether it's flood, mist, through coolant, um, air coolant. So we select which one is most applicable to our machine. So for the point of this tutorial, I'm gonna keep it on flood. And then we can go down to speeds and feeds. Now it does suggest certain speeds and feeds for us, which is normally really accurate and it's ideal to work from if you're not sure. Or we can put in our own speeds and feeds into the machine. So everything here I'm happy with, I'm just gonna click on OK. Now we can see it in action. To actually see a simulation of what's gonna happen, so we know we're not gonna crash into any clamps or cause any damage, we can simulate this part so we can make sure everything looks good before we send it to the machine. So to run a simulation, we click on this icon here to simulate under actions. And that gives us a nice little movie box here where we can play fast forward, rewind, etc. So we can hit the play button and we can hold down the control key and middle mouse button to rotate to see what the tool is doing. And as you can see, it's spiraling down. It's taken four millimeter cuts and it's coming down in a spiral fashion to remove all this material. And it's gonna finish off one last finishing pass around the walls to take a spring cut. Then it retracts back up to our top working retract height, which is 15 millimeters from the surface. So if we had 10 millimeter clamps on our part, it would clear them on the way back to its home position. So we're just gonna run that again from a different angle to make sure it's exactly what we're looking for. And we can stop and pause it to move around at any time 
Every time we move the viewpoint, it pauses it so we can see what is going on. That looks perfect to me. We've got plenty of clearance between the cutter and the top of our spindle. And it finishes off the part 0.1 millimeters deeper than the actual wood. When we're machining something like this, I would use a backing plate. Double-sided tape often works fine if you don't want to use clamps. It depends on the strength of the tape, and of course you don't want to get any coolant on the tape because it will come undone. But quite often, just simple double-sided tape of the wood onto a backing plate because we don't want to cut into the table of the machine. So we would use a backing plate to mount this on top of. So once we're happy with that, we can simply close our box and we have our G-code program now to cut out this shape. All we have to do is send it to the post processor to output it to a language that our personal machine can understand. Now there's lots and lots of different post processors for different machines. Yours is probably listed in Fusion 360. If it's not, you can see the manufacturer of your machine to get the post processor for it. So the next section, we're gonna look into outputting some G-code and using a post processor.